there's an awful lot of people that we have come in contact with and work with who are going to be thrown in jail or killed. The only thing we can do, we can't change policy, we can't change the government. We can make it harder for them by putting them in the spotlight. So we decided to create an award show to put people who are in jeopardy of going to jail or being killed and saying, we're going to focus on them, we're going to make a big event around these people and try to make it harder. And so you are going to be giving out five awards. First, we've got Albie. And we named it after Albie Sachs, this amazing lawyer who fought against apartheid, blown up in a car bomb and lost his arm, was appointed by Mandela. Served on the Constitutional Court, wrote the Bill of Rights, and was completely undeterred by having lost his arm and the, I think he lost sight in one eye and has just spent his whole life fighting for justice. So we couldn't think of anyone better than Albie to name the awards after. So Maria Ressa, she's Filipino-American because basically she's one of the best journalists in the Philippines. Duterte and his regime has gone after her. We're defending her in multiple cases and she faces the rest of her life in prison. George and I have had dinner with her when she's been out of the country and we just ask her like, you know what you're going back to and the risks, you know, and at first she was like, it's fine, you're my lawyer now. And I'm like, no, it's yeah. not fine. And she says she has to go back because she said she's holding up the ceiling for every other journalist in the country. After the May 2020 fraudulent elections in Belarus, thousands of people were arrested and we've monitored many of those trials. But this group that we're honoring has been fighting this fight for 30 years and really trying to take on the Lukashenko regime. Seven of them are in prison, so it may be an empty chair that we have to honor. The next award is for Justice for Survivors, so it's an incredible group. They were able to shine a light on atrocities in Darfur when nobody was looking or cared. A decade and a half later, the first trial is taking place in The Hague of the leader of the Janjaweed militia that, along with Sudanese forces, targeted civilians. He's now standing trial in The Hague, and I represented victims of those atrocities, you know, many of whom have been in a refugee camp since 2003, 2004, when they escaped Darfur and their children have only ever known life in that camp. It's a very dangerous world in Chad that they're working in. These are really brave people who have very little to gain and a lot to lose. The more we can bring some safety to them, the better. Josephine Kulia, she runs a refuge for girls who are trying to escape from child marriage in Kenya. She escaped child marriage herself. She saw members of her family have to go through this at a very young age, and she was determined to try and stop this. And so she started in a really small way, you know, sheltered sort of 10, 20 girls, and now it's gone up to over a thousand and she is facing significant threats. She said literally the men who are trying to marry these children have scaled the walls of her refuge and you know she's faced death threats. Her goal is to reunite them with their family when it's safe to do so. So it's really easy on any given day to be despondent, dejected, depressed about the state of the world and especially given what you all work on. How do you stay hopeful? You know, when I was growing up, my father, um, who's a, who is, continues to be a huge influence on me, just said, look, there's only one thing you have to do. He started it when I was 10 years old. He was like, look, all you have to do in your life is challenge people with power and stick up for people without power. If you do that, you win. That's it. 